going to go into here so you can kind of see what's going on. So for those of you that haven't done YouTube live streaming with us before, there is about a 20 second delay. Again, I've got so many cameras now, it's freaking me out. Uh, there is about a 20 second delay uh, in the stream going live and you seeing it. Uh, your volume isn't coming through. Uh, let me double check. I can see the mic's coming through fine on my end. I'll just unmute and see if I can hear it. It's going to go into here so you can kind of yep, see what's going on. I can on. hear it live. It's working fine, Robbie. Uh, from my end and on YouTube as well, so because I can test it live on YouTube. So double check, Rob, that it's working for you. I'll do a triple check and I'll have a look at the actual stream uh, here. Live and you seeing it. Yep, okay, so I'm coming through everywhere, Rob, so I'm gonna have to say that one, there we go, now it's working. See, it's just me talking about it. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so those of you that are new to YouTube live streaming, like I said, about a 20 second delay, uh, which means when you put your questions in chat, I will get to them, uh, but I'll probably get them in 20 seconds or so. You'll hear them, they'll pop up the second you type them in. Uh, I'll answer them and then you'll you'll hear them 20 seconds later. So that's kind of how this works. Uh, the other thing as well with YouTube, thanks, I've got a text message as well, it's just like everywhere. Um, the other uh, way this works as well, uh, currently YouTube can kind of compress live streaming. Uh, everyone's compressing bandwidth at the moment, especially around this time. So if the resolution isn't super great for you, let me know. I can make a couple of changes on my side to make that a little bit better. I'll increase the resolution of my screen. So let me know if it's not that clear. Um, and I'll also record this as well. So I'm going to record a high resolution version offline, which is also part of this OBS software. So everything I'm doing today, I'm going to be running through that software and I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, so you can start to do multiple streams as well. So I guess the first thing everyone's been asking for is to have a look at a bit of the setup that I have here. So it's not amazing, right? Like everyone's kind of, I guess, dealt with all of uh, all the changes in their own certain ways. So I'll show you kind of what setup I've got. I'm going to switch to another camera at the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, and again, I'm just doing this all through software here. I'm going to actually increase this camera. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to pick it up because I'm actually connected and I'll show you what I'm using here. So I'm just going to switch this around. All right, so I'm switching my view. So basically hardware wise, uh, probably the main uh, things that we need here, and I've just noticed with my phone, I've got to hold it a certain way or it comes upside down. So I'll try my best because um, I am connected to a cable. So I'm just going to move this around. Okay, so I guess main bits of equipment that I've got, which I think is super important, uh, is a good microphone. So this is a Rode USB-C mic. Uh, you can still get them. Uh, a lot of equipment at the moment is really hard to come by. Uh, I would definitely um, recommend picking up a, an external mic like this as opposed to a mic uh, that's like on your laptop. One thing I've discovered by doing this because I've got my laptop at home is that laptops have terrible, terrible sound cards built into them. They're not really designed, I guess, for doing this kind of stuff. So that's super important. A really, really simple USB-C uh, mic that comes off as well if you want to. So if you want to actually take that off and put it on a tripod, you can. Uh, but hopefully I'm sounding beautiful and clear. And that's because of this little guy here as well. Ignore the toys in the background. My son uses this office as well. The other thing that I've got, uh, which I would definitely recommend as well, is this here. Now, this is an external DAC, so a digital audio converter. Um, and so, again, because I find the sound cards on laptops, especially on, on my laptop, are, are, are quite terrible, um, what I was finding was, when I was recording, the audio from my mic, anyway, was, was pretty bad. So, what this is, it's an external, I guess you could call it an external sound card, okay? So, that is running into my computer, again, for a USB. There's my sound cut there. So that's kind of running in and processing all the audio. So I've got the mic and everything through there and I also have my headphones through there as well. And so I can switch everything on the fly. There's a really cool little dial here as well. Uh, I like dials. Uh, but simple dial for volume control. I can switch it between the mic uh, and my headphones super easy. So if I want to focus on the microphone, I can do that and I can switch back and forth. So two bits of gear I would definitely recommend picking up, which you still can. People haven't really cottoned on to this kind of stuff yet. Um, so I would look at getting these two bits of uh, equipment. Um, all up, I think, you know, the mic's about 100 bucks and the DAC's about 100 bucks. So, um, you know, there is a cost to it, but it will definitely help. The other thing I'm using, which I guess is going to be trickier to see, uh, I might use my other camera, is I'm going to switch across here and I'll switch this to me so you can see. Hello. Um, what I'm using now is my phone. So this is what I'll talk about really briefly today uh, and probably one of the best um, bits of software that you will get. So as you know, uh, I'll switch this back to my face and I'm just going to place it uh, over here. And there we go. And I'll shrink myself down. You don't need to see that. Um, so 
as you know, webcams are almost impossible to come by uh, right now. And if you do get one, they're ridiculously expensive. But I guarantee you've probably got about 10 webcams at home. So I know we've got like five. And by that, I mean your iPhones and Android devices, basically anything with a camera in it. So I'm using my iPhone at the moment, uh, plugged by uh, USB. Now you don't have to do that. You can actually use wireless as well and Wi-Fi. And so what you'll have there is I can set this camera up. I was going to do it today, but I decided against it. I can set up uh, my phone, my iPad, or any device, even if it's a really old device lying around, it's got a camera. I can set that up uh, in any room in my house over Wi-Fi. I don't need to be connected. And I can switch between them really easily. So I can turn them off like this. I'm just going to turn myself off, right? Um, or I can turn it back on again. I can set scenes up, which I'll talk about in a little bit later, where I can have a full screen here, and I can just turn that off and turn that on whenever I want to. So I can set all of that up on these um, on my iPhone, which is really, really great. And the quality is really good. Um, uh, there is a free version of this software. I'll bring it up over here in a second so you can actually see what I'm using. Uh, it's a, there's a free version of it. I wouldn't recommend using the free version. It'll bombard you with ads. It costs about $13 to buy the app. Uh, it's called Epoch. Uh, let me bring it up now so you can see. I'm just gonna bring another tab over here. Let me just switch this across. Uh, we'll just get rid of that. And I'll bring this across here. Yeah, because I'm using a couple of screens. So this is the the app that I'm using. Okay, uh, yeah, it's about thirteen bucks in Australia. This is obviously the American app store. It's not going to cost you much, uh, but it can do a lot. So I'm actually I can control the settings on this. So I've got the front facing camera. I've got the rear facing camera on my phone. I can control the quality. So I can bring the quality down. I'm only doing it six forty by four eighty uh, as a webcam. It just means the bit rate is a lot smaller, so it's a lot faster. But you can go all the way up to ten eighty p if you want to. Uh, you can use, like I said, the front and rear facing cameras. You can ha It's got green screening built into it as well. So you can use it as a green screener kind of camera. If I had behind me a, I don't know, a, a blanket or some kind of backdrop, uh, I could use green screen on here. So you won't have, like if you have a look at these current settings here, you can see all of that. I can actually get rid of all that if I want to and just kind of be floating uh, in this space as well. Uh, you can also use the audio from here too. So if you cannot get a good microphone, you can use the audio from your phone. So your phone is gonna have the best kind of webcam and the best audio experience you're gonna get. Uh, it's gonna blow your laptop away. Uh, and like I said, you've probably already got one. So for the sake of 12 bucks, I would definitely pick that up. Uh, and you can have multiple and you can move it around. So that's what that is. Uh, it does use a piece of software that you install on your computer. Um, and that is how all of this kind of basically works. So I would def uh, definitely, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna talk a lot. Uh, look at getting that software uh, if you want to be able to do multiple uh, camera streams, multiple scenes, uh, but even if you find that your your current webcam is pretty bad, um, that's what that is for. So that's my biggest tip of the day. Uh, we should get some commission. All right, so let's let's kind of get cracking. So that's my gear. So like I said, external mic, uh, Rode mic, a DAC, an audio kind of DAC, so I can switch between mic and headphones and just the audio being a lot better because uh, that's kind of processing everything through there as well. So again, I should be sounding beautiful and clear for you. Uh, one trick I have found as well though is the good thing with the DAC is my laptop um, and probably like most laptops we're using, uh, I've got an Alienware and it does tend to sp you know, really spin the fans up really loud. Uh, so when I have a session like this, you can kind of hear the fans more. So by having that kind of external mic and DAC, I can move that away. Uh, and clean that sound up a bit. So that is, I guess, what I'm doing and how I'm using it. Uh, again, ask any questions as we go. You probably don't really need to see two of me, but uh, it's fun. So I guess this is all about, like I said, open broadcast software. So this software is, like I said at the start, it is kind of like what you have that controls your stream. Think of it like, how can I put it? Like, it's like the producer. You can go in there, you can set scenes, you can set video, you can choose what screens you're going to see. You're completely in charge of your stream on the fly as you go. Doesn't cost you a cent, it's all free. There's lots of different kinds of uh, OBS software. I'm using Streamlabs OBS at the moment. It uh, is a free one. Uh, there are paid for features, but they're generally the features that are paid for on this are more for streamers. Uh, I don't think I am a professional YouTuber by any stretch of the imagination, but for streamers that like that are doing kind of gaming and those kind of things, uh, the the paid for items on the software are more for like getting subscribers and donations and, and getting income actually from your stream. So if you want to donate, please do. Uh, but that's uh, that's how that works. I'm just going to kind of bring this screen down. You don't need to see me so much. Uh, in fact, what I might do is I'm going to turn off uh, for now. I'm going to turn off my face uh, and I might turn off uh, this one as well. There we go. Just so you can see exactly what I'm what I'm using. You don't need to see me. Um, so this is the software, like I said. So the software, uh, 
connects to all of your equipment. Uh, it does this thing called sources, which we'll talk about, and then you choose where it streams to. So everything goes through the software and then to your streaming platform of choice. So at the moment, I've got it going through to YouTube live streaming because that's what I like using and I think it's a great platform uh, for many reasons I've talked about, but I won't talk about them again. But we can choose to go to other sources like you can uh, output it to Facebook, you can output it to Twitch, you can output it to a bunch of other things as well. And you can also output it to multiple sources as well. Uh, so now I'm going to be careful when I do this because I'm actually running the stream through here. So I, I, I've got to be really careful that I don't, you know, cancel and delete the stream as I'm showing you. So what you can do is, yes, yeah, so, so you can see I'm, I'm live streaming now, so I can't do some stuff here. But in your stream outputs, I can choose to go and output to multiple sources at the same time. So I can be streaming to YouTube while streaming to Facebook, while streaming to Twitch, like all of these platforms at once, which is, which is handy. All right, so what I might do actually, just because I know it can be confusing to talk um, and not see a face, is I'll put that one back on again. So just I'll just dump it in the corner down here. Okay, so what you have in the software is when you load up, this is kind of what you see, except it will be blank. None of these things will be here, none of this will be here, and this will just be an empty screen. Okay, so I'll kind of run you through how it works and how you set up all of your content. You can see, I can just double check everything's working, so I can check my audio is coming through okay, I can check my video capture is coming through okay, so it's all going through there. So how it works is you set up what are called sources and scenes. I'll talk about sources first, uh, and then I'll talk about scenes. So your source is your input. So where is your stream package getting its content from? So at the moment you can see I've got quite a lot here. I've got video capture from my iPhone coming in as a source. So again, I can turn that on or turn that off, okay? I've got audio coming in as well. So if I double click that, there's my Rode mic, okay? As my audio that's coming through. I have quite a few options here, but I'm just gonna leave it on Rode for now. I have a second video capture device, which I turn back on. That's my other webcam, which is over here. Okay, that's on my computer. So I also have an image uh, as well. So I can turn this image on and off. I can have multiple images. I can put this wherever I want. So an image can be a source as well. I'll put that over there and I'll just turn that off. And then I have display capture, which if I turn off, it's all gone. So it's, hey, it's just me. So display capture is my screen, okay? And I can choose what screen I want to capture as well. I don't have to capture the screen that I'm working on. So there's a whole bunch of these. So if I just kind of hit plus in here, you can see all of the options in terms of what you can capture. Now, we're not going to talk about widgets and stuff. That's really there for streamers that are trying to use this platform to make money. So I'm not going to worry about that. This is the kind of the stuff that we're looking at here. Okay, so we've got an image uh, as a source. So I might have a, a photo, you know, the Bendigo Tech School logo, and I can switch between that whenever I want to. Let's just say I have to quickly run out because Raf's, you know, destroyed something outside. Uh, I can switch to a, an image or a video even that says, you know, we're having technical problems and I'll come back soon. Uh, so that can be an image. A browser source is a web page. So again, I can switch to a web page as a source. So with a click of a button, you can be seeing a web page I might have on another screen. So I might be referring to the Tech School website a lot and I can have that as a source. So I can quick, quickly flip to it as opposed to what I did before where I kind of like moved across here and found a web page and then moved it across. I can make it nice and seamless for my, my viewers. Uh, display capture we talked about, that's your display. So I've got multiple displays here. So I can actually add in a couple of displays. So I can be capturing two displays. Uh, in fact, let's see if I can do that now. Again, I'm just gonna be careful that I'm doing it while I'm streaming, but uh, I'll try and do that on the fly. So I'm just gonna add a source here uh, and I'm gonna click add source. So we're gonna say add a new source. I'm gonna say add display capture one. And here you can see I've got my other monitor, which is a big boy. All right, I'm gonna do this. Now, hopefully I don't destroy everything. No, I didn't, excellent. All right, so what we have here is, wow. Now my other monitor is a quite a big monitor. Uh, I got, I purchased for the sake of doing this kind of stuff. It's a 4K monitor, so you can see the resolution is pretty high. So I'm gonna move that over there now. So now what I'm doing, um, what I better make sure there's nothing on my desktop. Uh, there's not, excellent. So that's the other thing, of course, when you do live streaming, you've got to make sure that uh, everything that you're streaming is okay for your viewers. So now I'm actually running both screens. So if I go across here, that's my secondary monitor. Okay, and then back over here is my, my laptop monitor. So I can even stream multiple sources uh, as, I, as I'm going through, so multiple displays. So if you have a multiple display system, three or four screens, you can do that. You can have something on one screen, something on the other screen, and with a click of a button, I can just kind of like turn that off uh, and turn that on again. So that's really handy having multiple screens. You can set up a bunch of content on one screen and then just when you want to, flick it on. Uh, if I want to, and I'll talk about scenes in a second, I can have that so that's obviously full screen and I can play around with it. So I'm just gonna turn that off because I don't think I need to see two screens at the same time. Um, but that's how you add a source. So we just did it then obviously with a display, but I'll, I'll go back in. So that's your display capture, game capture. Uh, if again, more for streamers, uh, if I was had a, an Xbox or a PlayStation or whatever, uh, as an external source, I can capture from that source. 
audio input capture. Okay, that is the microphones. All right, so you've got microphones on your laptop, microphones if you had an external mic like I've got, uh, microphones on the phone if you're using your phone as well. Scenes I won't talk about just yet. Color and media source I don't need to talk about. Window capture, uh, basically that is capturing a certain window. So you can also not just share a whole screen, but you can share just a section of your screen as well, which is pretty handy. So you could also on one monitor, you know, have multiple different windows that are open and actually be switching between all those at the same time. So you could have like 20 screens running, right? Uh, it's almost like a, we're having a football match that we're streaming live here. Uh, window capture, uh, we just talked about video capture device. So external video capture devices I'm not using any of those and audio output capture so if I'm actually outputting my audio somewhere else as well uh, so that is all of your inputs so you can see there's a lot right and then once you add them in here they're in almost like a layered order so if that is on top which I've got display capture one the one I just added you'll see by default that goes on top of all my other content okay so I'm just going to turn that off so depending on this order here, it's where things will be seen, okay? Uh, and like I said, I can turn it on and off as I go. So they're your input sources. There's a whole bunch of them. You can also group them as well. So you can group them into a folder, which is just for, um, you know, certain types of streaming. You might have one that is like, I don't know, I want to stream all different areas of my house. Uh, and I could have that in a folder. So with one click, I turn on all my external cameras or, or turn them off again as well. Um, actually, while I remember that, the other thing you can do while using your phone as a, basically as a webcam too, is you can monitor it as well. So you've got a little a security system. Um, but anyway, I, I digress. So we'll head back. So yes, yeah, so here are all your sources. And as you go, what's happening is this is kind of putting it all onto this output screen up here. So if I kind of move this down a little bit, uh, we'll let you see a little bit more here. I think I can just skip all of these alerts. They always keep coming up. I'm not just moving that. All right. So this is my screen. So this is showing me what's actually outputting to YouTube at the moment. All right. So I can see exactly uh, what it looks like, which is why I have a screen within a screen within a screen within a screen, uh, because that's what's outputting uh, into basically into my streaming platform. So my OBS software is getting all of the sources, combining them together, and then outputting one video source uh, to YouTube as it goes through. Okay. So then that is your input. All right. Now, not now. So the other thing uh, as well uh, that you can do is these things called scenes, okay? And these are really handy. So at the moment, uh, I don't really have a scene set up. These are really handy for setting up certain, I guess, scenes, that's why they're called scenes, but certain, I guess, things that you're trying to do in your session. So for example, I'm gonna to switch to Daniel. I can flick back to a different scene that I have set up here as well, okay? So what I might do again, I might just, you don't need to see uh, both of me, I'll just turn that one off. So by clicking through these, And this one has all my devices. So you can set up a scene however you like and you can arrange it however you like. So you can switch between uh, certain situations. So I like having Daniel's big... back across there. Sorry. Done. Okay, so you actually might not have heard me before because I just realized when I had my Daniel's Big Head scene on there, uh, I didn't have my USB uh, mic connected. So I'm not sure if that actually came through. It may have just defaulted uh, and used my video capture device as an audio input. I'm not sure. Let me know if you heard me talking before. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Robbie. So I'm right. So I'll go back to what I was saying before. Um, so with my scene here, because uh, I just set this up this, mo uh, this morning, is I didn't have an audio capture set up in that scene. So we'll do a new scene in a second and I'll show you how that works because even I slipped up then. Uh, I just had a video input capture and I didn't have an audio input capture. So it was just watching me talk, uh, which wouldn't have been very exciting. So that's what happened there. So I'll explain that in a second so we can create a new scene. So you could say I did that on purpose to troubleshoot. 
Uh, I'm doing the design thinking method. All right, so as I was saying before, I can switch between these scenes whenever I want, uh, and they all have different purposes. So my big head scene here, now that you can hear me, uh, is really for when I just want to talk to the talk to the screen and not have you distracted with anything else. My stream also doesn't have a mic on it, so I'm going to quickly add a mic to that. Done. Okay, so I just quickly added an input source to this screen as well so you can hear me. So, like I said, whenever you set up a new source, you need to make sure all of your inputs are configured. I always seem to forget the microphone one, so that was my bad. Anyway, let me explain again how these work by creating a new one. So, let's say you want to have a scene where you want to just share your screen, okay, uh, and maybe a webcam, and that's it. Then that is in here. So, I'm going to hit a Add new scene button. Now hopefully I can still uh, record and you can see this. So I'm going to call this new scene um, just, yeah, we'll call it YouTube. Okay, so I've got a new scene here. I'll hit... I'm going to have to jump back and forth. As I do this, as I jump to the new scene, uh, you're not going to see much because I'm creating it as we go. So give me a second. I'm going to turn on the webcam as the first input device so then I can run you through the rest of it. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now you're probably seeing my screen and hearing me. So when I created that new scene called YouTube, okay, by default, it didn't have uh, any sources in here. Okay, so there's nothing you're seeing. Like I said, it's trickier to do this on the fly uh, while I'm actually streaming, obviously. This is stuff you want to have set up before you uh, run your session. Okay, you want to have all of this kind of in the in the bag ready to go. So I've set up a display capture, which is my screen really quickly. Uh, I might even scale that down so it fits a bit better. So you can scale everything, you can arrange it in this window. And I quickly set up an audio input capture, which was my microphone. So now I've got those two going, let me show you how to add some other things in here as well. I'll add my webcam, for example. So I go in, I add a new scene. Oh, sorry, I add a new source into my scene. I'm going to go into video capture device. And you can see I've got a couple of options. I can choose my... Oh, that's freaky if I do that. I look nicer on this one. Look at that. That's the iPhone. Look at that. My skin looks kind of more glowy. Um, so I can switch between the two cameras. Again, you can see just how better my iPhone camera is. And that's on the lowest setting as well. So obviously these cameras are far better. Um, but I can choose which input I want. I'm going to choose that one. That looks better. I'm going to add that. Uh, and then there it is there. By default, it's at the top of the list. Uh, I have a lot of bandwidth here. Oh, I'm back. So... That is how that works. If I go in wanting to add another new source to this, I might go and do, let's do an image. Uh, I don't want a slideshow, it's going to be a standard image. You can see what kind of images that you can input. Oh, I'm going to add a source here. That's one I already had ready, but I could add a new one if I wanted to by clicking this add source, basically new source button. So I can choose a different image, but I'm going to say add that one. And there it is there. So this is what I mean by having this all set up before you go, obviously. You have to, you have to tweak this. You have to kind of arrange the workspace so it works for you. So I might actually put that there, right? So I can cover up that window that's just kind of like a mirror and everything. But I can change that image as well. And because I put it in there, it came on the top. Can you pop, copy and paste a scene to save time? Instead of, yeah, I guess let's find out, Rob. I'm sure you can duplicate. Yes, you can. There you go. So you can duplicate one and change it around. Uh, you can also apply these cool filters as well. So if we go through here, uh, let's. I have not actually tried these, but I'm going to now because Robbie made me do it. So if I do that, let's see if this works. This is, I don't want to crash everything. Um, Let's see what that's done. I don't know what a face plus plugin. Maybe it's uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I shouldn't be playing around with things. Let me get rid of that filter. Um, but yeah, so you can duplicate your scenes, Rob, and then and then make some small changes to them. So you know, this is the one I use a lot. I might just duplicate that and add a couple of different scenes there. But you can see this by clicking between them. Uh, it's super fast. Uh, by clicking between all of these as well. So big head scene, back to YouTube scene. Uh, and again, you can make as many scenes as you like. Okay, so. If we go down here, again, you can kind of group them. I'm going to add a new one here. I might call this something else. Again, I won't do it because it'll cut everything off. Um, but you can kind of play around with all of those different scenes. So you could have a scene that has your cameras, like I said, set up in your... In the, so if I say the text tool, I could have a lot of our cameras set up. I could use a lot of our iPads. We have like a lot of iPads. Uh, I could set them all up around the text tool. Uh, and each of these scenes could be a different part of the text tool. So I could quickly switch between, say, laser cutting room. And that'll switch between that scene with that camera, how I've arranged it. You know, I've got the camera set up in a certain way. I might have the camera, you know, not... you can set your scenes up however you like. Um, just checking the chat. Uh, you can set your scenes up however you like and just with a click of a button. 
switch between them, which is cool. And again, all your viewers are seeing is the, the output of this as well. So that's your scenes. Um, I might just leave it on this one here. So other than that, uh, down here, you've got your mixer. So this is where all of your inputs are being shown and you can kind of mix between them. So you can mix between, again, depending on what kind of audio you've got. If you've got, I'm pretty lucky now that I've got this mic. It's actually really, really good. So I don't actually have to play with audio quality. And because I'm using this uh, external DAC as well, that's handling everything. But if you didn't have that kind of gear, you might have uh, a couple of mics that maybe one mic is overpowering the other or something like that. You can actually mix it between here. Uh, that's what this is for. So I can turn the volume up and down on certain devices and try and get a, I guess, an audio or video setup, which is working well for me. But again, if you have a, a good mic and a good DAC, um, you, you, you don't need to do that, which is why I'm not doing it. Um, so that's your mixer there through there as well. Okay, so we're kind of getting uh, oh, pretty much to everything in here. Um, all right, so what have we got here? I'm just saying YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth buffering. All right, so it looks like we might be getting a little bit of buffering. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, a couple of things here to hopefully make this a little bit better for us. So that's the other thing you can do, obviously. I'm just going to kill my live stream. So I'm going to kill that video. All right. So I'm just trying to maintain a little bit of bandwidth at the moment. It looks like it's uh, there's a fair bit going on. I'm just going to open this widget up. Okay, cool. All right, so you may be getting a bit of buffering at the moment. Um, YouTube has informed me that they are uh, obviously got a lot going on. You can stop for a bit at the digital audio mixing desk if you want to stream. Yeah, you can, Rob. That's, I mean, that's exactly what a lot of people use it for. They use it for live stream mixes and video concerts, and obviously that's going to be your your chosen profession in this quiet time, Robbie. Um, but yes, you can, you can definitely do that. Uh, you definitely can do that as well. Um, all right, so hopefully the stream is still coming through okay. I'm just going to make sure everything is working well. It seems to be. So that's all okay there as well. In fact, what I'm going to, I might even just, for the sake of the stream, I'm actually going to shut down chat for a sec uh, and I'll reopen it just so I can kind of get as much bandwidth as I can. So I'm just going to shut that down. Okay. So hopefully uh, the stream has picked up a little bit uh, in terms of quality. It looks like it's the tricky time. Anyway, let's get back to it. So we talked about our mixer down here. We talked about our sources, which are really important. And we talked about our scenes. And that is pretty much the main part of this. What we have down here as well is we have our record button. So you can set up a record. So it's actually recording your screen as well. Uh, and you can choose what it records to. So that's a bit of a backup. You know, in case your stream crashes, uh, you have a backup video of it. I've actually stopped doing the recordings and uploading those as a separate video because I found that YouTube's actually been pretty good at the moment. Uh, and also it creates a separate video and it kind of, I don't know, people kind of get lost by seeing so much. So I've actually, uh, I haven't been doing that, but I have been recording them in the background. That's what that's for. Uh, this is a replay buffer. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, and this is scheduling a, a stream. So this is where you set up streams uh, for future playback. So I'm going to jump across to this screen. And again, this is where scenes would have been really important, right? Where I can just switch straight across to the YouTube channel and show you what's going on. So I will probably set those up later tonight um, just because, well, I can now. So I'm just going to switch across here. All right, now I'm going to bring this. Actually, I should just do this, shouldn't I? I'll go display capture one and turn that on. There we go. See, look, I'm listening to my own advice. Uh, instead of dragging stuff across, I can just switch a button. So what I might do is do that. There you go. Uh, but generally, I should make a new scene that has just my second display with my microphone engaged so I can switch between them smoothly. But that's for another time. But yeah, so scheduling is for scheduling these kind of things here. So you can see in YouTube live streaming, I've got what's currently live, okay, which is this one. Uh, and then I have my upcoming streams. And you can see I have all the dates. I've got everything ready to go and I schedule those through the OBS software. I find that's the easiest way to do it uh, by creating a schedule. Let me click on that. Now, hopefully I don't kill the stream by doing this. We'll find out. Uh, better be very careful doing this. All right. So it might not let me schedule a stream while I'm running a stream, which is probably the safest thing not to do. So I'll close that down. But that's where you schedule your stream for future playback. So it has a date and a time, a title uh, and a blurb. And then you just basically hit enter. And then when you go back to your, say, YouTube, it'll be sitting here ready to go in upcoming streams and you can go back and change the settings if you want to. So that is through there. So there's a quick uh, plug of what we're, well, we're doing a lot. Uh, what we're doing in the next couple of weeks uh, is all across there. All right, I'll show you a couple more things, uh, but really I don't use anything else, okay? So other than this little setup here, I'll turn off that. Other than this setup here, uh, I don't use anything else for the streams. I mean, yes, they're not the most polished, super great streams, but really when I'm doing a stream, let's say I'm doing a stream on Photoshop. Uh, so let me just open uh, Photoshop. 
I don't know, I've been in photos. Potato, oh, I can't type and uh, I don't want to open Portal 2. Uh, photo shop. It's hard to type and stare at a different screen on another keyboard. So when I'm running a session, obviously if I'm doing, I'm doing a Photoshop session or I'm doing a Premiere session, uh, really I'm not sharing a great deal, right? Like the focus is the screen here. So that's why, like I said, I don't use a lot of stuff because I'm mostly just sharing my screen uh, and my, my video down here. But um, I had a session uh, a while ago where I was doing some laser cutting stuff and I wanted to switch between a laser cutter in my garage and those kind of things. And that's where this is really handy. Uh, so let's move that across here. I'm going to move Photoshop over here. So this is where, again, those uh, scenes are quite handy. So I can have Photoshop set up on one screen. I can have that set up as a scene. Uh, and we can use that as my, my capture source and I can switch between Photoshop and the screen quite easily. So again, handy for, for doing those kind of things. There are a few other things. I'll show you what they are, uh, but I doubt that we will ever use them, especially in this more education uh, environment that we all kind of work with. So I'm going to go across here. So this is our, I guess, our editor. This is where we're seeing everything happen. Okay. Now, again, I'm not sure how great some of these will appear as I'm streaming uh, because a lot of this stuff is really designed... Uh, for before your stream starts, but uh, I'll, it seems to be going okay. Uh, let me know if it's uh, causing some issues to the stream. I might just quickly jump in and I'm just going to double check and make sure there's nothing important in chat that I'm missing. Um, cool, no, it's all going okay. Stream seems to be okay. It looks like it's a little bit low res, a bit buffered, but it seems to be coming through okay. So you can check it live, obviously, which is good too. So I, I can check our stream live as well as doing it because there is that 20 second delay. So I'll just close that down. All right, so what we have down here in themes, uh, this is, I guess you could say, these are scenes that have already been set up, right? Some of them are pretty, I guess, in your face. Uh, I can see Graham not liking a lot of these. Uh, the design I might not be uh, up to everyone's taste. Uh, but these are here more for the gamers, for YouTubers, for stuff like that, where they have this really kind of animate, like they animate and they move in and out. It's pretty nuts, right? Um, but that's what these are for. These themes are for setting up your stream in a very, I guess, uh, oof, chroma, uh, a very uh, colorful way. Uh, so we can create a, a theme if we want. You can buy these themes or they're also th uh, free if you sign up. So this is where they make their money uh, on these themes. Uh, but you can create your own, right? But that's what that's in there. That's your theme library. Uh, down here in this little section, uh, this is your cloud bot. Uh, this is here for chat. Again, I don't have a huge amount of chat, right? Uh, but if you uh, did have a massive um, fan base, right? I'm sure I will soon. Robbie will get it out there. Uh, these little bots here, uh, you can turn on to help chat essentially. So what we have here is turning off all caps. I can turn that on and no one can type all caps. It, the bot will actually kind of like come in and fix it for you on the fly, which is cool. Uh, you can get rid of word protection. So any naughty words, uh, we can have that turned on as well. Uh, those kind of things. Okay. So these little chat bots will come in uh, and you can see there's a lot of them. Okay. These little bots will come in and do these very like specific things that you want. You're kind of like coding your, your, uh, your stream to suit you. That's what that is. And then finally down here, if it kicks across, all right, we're into kind of like, again, draw, I guess, could be handy. So it allows me to draw on the screen, highlight, circle stuff. Those tools are built into Windows. You can do that, but uh, there's a bunch of little options there as well. All right, so that's kind of about it. Uh, your dashboard, if we switch across, again, I'm just going to be careful it doesn't kind of cut me off. Your dashboard is your dashboard uh, on your website. So when you sign up to one of these OBS softwares, you also have your own kind of little cloud base where you can see things like stats, you can see giveaways if you're doing them. Uh, let me switch across to that so you can see it. Um, I've got to go back into my main screen here. I'll turn on my display, my secondary display. So there we go there. So I'm not going to bring up any stats here, um, but you can see, you can go through and see all of your your chats and all of your streams and how everything was working. Let's see. I don't know if I can fly. I haven't done it. I didn't stream on, on Sunday. Let's have a look at some. I'm trying to go back. How far can we go back? Let's go back to, let's look at the week. All right. I don't even know how these stats are setting up, but this is all for things like donations and those kind of things as well. So that's all online. Um, so we'll switch back down here. I'll turn off that screen. Whoops. So I'm just going to go back here, get rid of that screen. Okay. And then down here is your editor. Now, hopefully you're seeing that. Um, this is your editor for setting up again, your scenes. All right. So you can see there's a lot of stuff here. You can do these pre-designed setups. So you don't have to sit there all day and kind of set one up. You can choose how to use it, basically. You've got um, these little mini feeds. So you can drag and drop everything in here, all right, and start to kind of mix up your screen and, and how it looks, okay? So you can see we've got everything down there. So I'll just uh, add that, and we'll call it that. I'm just going to call it 
uh, test. Actually, I might need to be on Prime to do that. Um, I'll just save those changes. All right, so there we go there. So you can see that I've just changed my layout to suit what I had there as well. Okay, so depending on what you want here, you can choose a layout that's going to kind of suit you. Uh, let's change that one. Uh, cool, so now my mixer is like front and center, okay? So you can kind of play around with these, but you can just simply go back to them uh, whenever you want and rechange your settings. So that's your layout there. Uh, finally, we'll click across here. Some of these won't actually uh, work. So studio mode allows you to go in and do editing on the fly, help we don't need, and logging out we don't need. So that's kind of that. Now what I've done is I've just gone, of course, and changed my screen completely. So let me see if I can go back to showing you what I had before. That's all right, we'll leave it like that for now and I'll fix it up later. Um, excellent, all right, and then finally we'll go into the settings so you can see what's going on in here as well. And we're nearly done, so let's go into our settings. Uh, general, all right, so what we have down here is just some confirmation inputs and outputs, pretty simple, right? Again, I don't really play with any of this kind of stuff, we don't need it. Um, I'm not going to disable hardware acceleration. I'll keep that on there as well, confirming. So all that stuff is fine. Your stream, I can't show you this because I'm running the stream, but your stream is where you go in and do your setups for your stream. So in here, I have my YouTube channel. I have my YouTube stream key. I have all those kind of things uh, and I set those up in here. So I can't show you that, but that's what's there. Uh, output. This is the output of where I'm going in terms of recording. So I can set up my recorder. I can say where the videos are going. I can have multiple audio tracks. I can have multiple video tracks, okay? And I can record those. So that's your output for recording your video and your audio, all right? Audio here as well. Again, that's just setting up what kind of audio you want, how many channels you want. If you want to have surround, 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 sound, sound, sound. Uh, you can do that as well. Your video is your resolution of your camera, okay? And that video resolution that's coming through, uh, FPS. So you can basically adjust the amount of um, bandwidth that you're using as you go through. Pop keys, I don't have any of those set up. Again, that's just so I don't have to fumble around uh, pressing stuff like a nong, like I'm normally doing. Um, I can just press some, some hotware keys here to kind of switch between recording and not recording and showing which, which scene I want to have and maybe turning on a display and turning off a display. They're all down there as well. Advanced, you don't have to worry about. That's just video quality. Game overlay, we're not doing, so we have to worry about that. Scene collections, we don't have to worry about. Notifications uh, are on by default. I don't think I have any notifications going on. I don't think anyone uh, is talking to me right now. Um, so that is okay. Uh, and then our appearance, obviously, is this here. And that was a face mask thing I was playing with before. I don't know what it is, so I better not play around with it. Uh, and then your remote control. Okay, so this is to control a lot of this from your phone as well. Um, so again, it's basically an app where you can kind of switch between everything like a switching desk. Uh, cool, so I'll get out of there. Um, excellent, all right, so that is pretty much it. It is really simple. Um, once you start using it, it's, uh, yeah, it's super simple to actually use. Uh, I might just jump back in to uh, YouTube. I haven't got chat up here. Oh, the other thing I would suggest too, if you're using something like YouTube, uh, is have chat on your phone and you can actually follow it there, um, which I should have done. Uh, I'll do that for next time. So you can kind of play around with that. I'll just make sure there is any pressing questions before I start to wrap up. Um, but caps, yes, this is true. Um, so, excellent, I'll switch back. So yeah, there is really not a much to this, right? Like, I'm hoping this overview is all you really needed to understand how to use the software. It is pretty simple. Uh, look, even I mess up by forgetting those sources. They're the main things, right? So your main things in here are your sources. So they're where the, I guess, where the content is coming from, be it a webcam, be it from a microphone, be it from anywhere. And whenever you set one up, make sure you set those in here and test them out. They're really important, okay? I talked about my... I guess my external camera by using that piece of software, Epoch uh, software, which turns your phone or your iPad into a webcam. I definitely suggest doing that and getting those set up so you can have multiple cameras. Okay, and we talked about scenes and how you create, uh, let's go to here, how you create new scenes uh, and easily can switch between them. And then we talked about, excuse me, <coughs> how important it is, because I forgot it, to make sure you add in all of your sources for every scene that you do. So I mucked up before and I made a new scene with my webcam, but I forgot to add my external uh, USB microphone. So make sure you do that as well uh, when you set up your scenes. And that is it. So very, very easy. Well, that was fun. Look at that. I can switch to my other view. Uh, so that is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, I reckon. So I, I would uh, recommend having a go. So the software I'm using is... Oh, I've just looked at myself on the screen. Uh, the software I'm using, like I said, is called Streamlabs OBS. It's free to download. Uh, you sign up. It's free to sign up. Uh, signing up just gives you uh, an account where you can start to, again, you can start to do things like 
gather your stats and get donations and that. But um, you can do that. And then you choose what kind of streaming software you want to output to. So like I said, I can't show you that uh, because it's running the stream. But then you choose your output software. Any suggested hardware for connecting Android or Apple to a computer as a camera? You don't need any hardware, Rob. So all you need is that uh, app. So that Epoch uh, app, uh, it is like 12 bucks. It's also on Android as well. So you yeah, don't need any uh, you don't need any dedicated hardware. It is just your your phone, the software on your phone, and then there's some free software you put on your computer. So it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, I I'm actually connecting my camera directly to uh, my computer, which is good because it doesn't you know hit my bandwidth on my Wi-Fi. But you can also do it over Wi-Fi as well, and you can have your camera anywhere in the room. So like I said, I can pick this up, I can move it around, I can quite easily switch between front facing and uh, rear facing camera. There we go there, and you can see my setup, and I can switch back again. So yeah, so no hardware needed, um, just the software, Rob, uh, and it's on every, uh, it's on Android and it's on uh, iOS, so I would I would check that out. Um, that is about it, I think. So yeah, so that's kind of everything. Uh, download it, have a play, see how you go. Uh, choose uh, your output source, uh, be it YouTube, be it whatever it's gonna be. Have a look at what it supports in terms of output, uh, and, um, and have a go. Look at that. I'm just, again, I'm just watching myself in that kind of 20 second delay. Um, and see how, how you go in terms of your streams. You can obviously, if you want to share a stream, you can do that as well. So again, I can't show you that because it's in the settings. So for instance, I'm using the Bendigo Tech School uh, YouTube channel and I'm obviously in my house. And if I want Robbie to do a stream tomorrow uh, and we want to use the exact same channel and the exact same uh, details, he can do that. It's a matter of sharing your what's called your stream key. So again, I can't show you it because that is locked out in stream. But in this stream setting here, especially for YouTube, there's a section that says stream key. And for instance, uh, I can kind of show you that without showing you because I don't want to obviously show everyone my stream key. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to just see if I can show you this without um, showing you this. Uh, this should be pretty simple to do. I think by default it's actually hidden. So stream here. I'm going to turn on that screen. Excellent. Okay. So what we have here in my management software, it's probably teeny tiny. Uh, I'll see if I can bring it up a bit. All right. Is These are all the streams I have upcoming. So let's just say Robbie and I wanted to uh, share this stream, uh, Premiere Pro, or I wanted Robbie to run it. Okay, from his place and not from mine. I'm just going to go into manage and I'm going to... I'm pretty sure it's hidden by default. It is. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and so what we have here is every, I guess, stream that you have ready to go uh, and set up has a what's called a stream key and it's hidden, right? And what that means is if I copy and paste that stream key into my software, when I hit stream, it automatically goes to this video. Okay, and it's ready to go. And then I hit go live, basically. Okay, so if I give that key to Robbie now, he can start the stream whenever he wants. Even though I've scheduled this for, you know, a couple of days, by having that key, he can jump on and he can use my stream. Okay, so that's how you share, I guess, streams through OBS software as well, is by sharing that password. It's basically a password to your video channel. Okay, uh, so that's how that works too. So I just thought I would, uh, I would show you that. So let me get out of there. All right. So we'll just turn off that one. Okay, so that's kind of like how all of that uh, works. So yeah, I can't think of anything else. So any other questions, um, give me a, a shout out, shoot me an email, um, but I can't, I can't think of anything else. So have a play, uh, see how you go, see what you like about it. Uh, but it definitely requires, I think, just a bit of playing around, a bit of kind of switching between all these sources and seeing how you go, adding certain sources on your laptop, you know, and just making sure they're all tested and they're all working. To test it out, you don't even have to go live. You can have all of your inputs here and you can just hit the record button and then record a stream. So the stream isn't going live, it's not going anywhere, but you can still record uh, basically your entire session as well. So you can also use this for screen recording. Uh, I'm doing a session tomorrow, uh, as a plug, uh, on Camtasia and screen recording software. Uh, but you can use this if you want to. You can use this to record your screen while also re uh, recording multiple devices and outputting a video that you can watch later. So uh, I'll, pr I'll talk about it tomorrow, how you can use this as a screen recording piece of software uh, as well. Uh, excellent. All right, let me just do one last check on the YouTube channel uh, to make sure that there are no other questions. Uh, and I think we can go. Done. Uh, thank you. A little solo chat. I know. Yes, people don't use chat much. It's okay. Uh, I always have lots of people watching, but no one using chat. It's all right, because they're so focused. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to end this stream. So to end the stream, it's pretty easy. I hit end stream. Uh, and then that is it. Uh, the other thing you'll find with any streams as well, uh, especially with YouTube, which is where I, I like to use it as well, is YouTube has... Um, 
what's called a basically a time lapse recording. So, um, what do they call it? A DVR mode. So, if anyone jumped into our stream right now, let's say I've got another hour to go, they can watch the stream from any time. They can watch it from the live point, or they can rewind it uh, and watch it from any part of the stream. So, the stream is automatically always running and streaming. So. That's really handy as well with YouTube live streaming. Uh, but I'm going to end it. Uh, this video will process and upload so you can watch it back later. Uh, and that is about it. I better say before I go to plug uh, a couple of things. So I did have the survey link on the side. So please fill out our survey link. Uh, in fact, probably starting, uh, probably here, emailing out certificates uh, to get those PD hours. Um, so yes, that will probably start happening, I'm guessing, tomorrow. So thank you, everyone. Uh, yes, I might just switch across to my other screen so I can do a bit of a plug. Uh, so here is uh, the coming week. We have Camtasia uh, and Windows 10 for screen recording and I'll also probably talk a little bit about using OBS for screen recording. Adobe Premiere is an introduction that everyone's been asking for. Uh, we'll be running that on the 6th. Uh, then on the 7th, we have our Illustrator Masterclasses starting up. That'll be the first session for that. Uh, and then following week, we have Block Coding in Scratch, uh, especially good for your students at home, uh, younger students, trying to get them into coding. Uh, Final Cut, that will be uh, probably a shorter session, that one. That was just a request from a couple of teachers to talk about Final Cut. Um, I'll do that on my Mac. Uh, and then I think hopefully a popular one uh, that a lot of people have been asking for as well, especially at the tech school, is podcasting and how to start a podcast uh, at home uh, for free. So this will be starting up a podcast, uh, really easy to actually start a podcast. Your students could start a podcast from their houses right now. Uh, they could record the audio, they can upload it, people can subscribe to it through iTunes. It's super simple. So that might be a fun project for your students to check out while they are uh, working from home. Uh, and then we have our another Illustrator Masterclass, the second in that series, uh, which is Intermediate. So that is it for me. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for this past hour or so. And uh, I've been talking a lot. So I am going to do one last chat of chat. Uh, and then I'm going to say, see you later. Ah, we can send out tomorrow. To, yes, we can do that as well. Yes, so I can send out some certs tomorrow too. So it's never too late to click that uh, registration button uh, and get that sorted. Uh, I believe our registration also has the survey link, Robbie. If I'm wrong, uh, I will, I'll add it uh, into the description when we are done today. Okay, so I'm going to hit the end of the stream.